In the summer of 1981, this house on Wonderland Avenue, high above the Hollywood Hills, was a popular destination. Wonderland was a place to go party. Summer, baby bummer. <laughs> it's the best party I've ever been to. Uh, it's only the beginning, baby. L.A. in the summer, anything can happen, right? This group of guys and their wives who, through the best parties, had the best drugs, had the best music, um, were... You know, the most playful and the most dangerous at the same time. That dangerous edge erupted in violence on the night of July 1st, 1981, when four people were murdered at 8763 Wonderland Avenue. Los Angeles police detectives Bob Souza and Tom Lang, who later worked the O.J. Simpson case, got the call to investigate the bloody crime scene. A scene so shocking and a mystery so complex, they wrote a book about the case. Four on the floor. There were uh, several bodies on the floor, four as it turned out. We are now in the residence, the first level the living room area. Blood splatterings are evident. It looked like someone took buckets of blood and just sloshed them around the house. It was a pretty gruesome sign. Four brutal murders. And as the investigation continued, police realized a central figure was infamous in his own right. Hi, I'm John Holmes. You know, I've been in the adult motion picture business a good number of years, and I've seen some very crazy things happen. I think that the drug addiction came because this world of pornography was just not a world that, that he enjoyed. So he had you know, an extremely low self-esteem, and that just a chronic need to try and get out of that feeling of uncomfortableness, I think, led him to, uh, to drugs and, and madness. Where are you going to go? Anywhere. Everywhere! Holmes' drug habit changed him and his relationship with his then-teenage girlfriend, Dawn Schiller, who spoke exclusively to Hollywood at large. When the cocaine came into view, into his life, I mean, he was, he was just insane almost immediately. In the film, Dawn Schiller is played by Kate Bosworth. She had a really young soul, was incredibly naive, and had an innocent air about her in a really dark, twisted world. Holmes was a regular at the Wonderland Party House, where his Come unique on. celebrity playing, was appreciated. No. Come on, John, don't lie to her. I think that they, they were jealous of him and, and enjoyed having the power over him. Sure. Oh, shoot it, man. Look, man, that could be loaded. Put it in your pants, John. Holmes had a plan for how to stay in the Wonderland gang oh, cool. and to hey. keep getting drugs from them. So I was just telling Ronnie about this business proposition I got about this Arab who's a really wealthy businessman. He calls me brother and he literally has mountains of cash. That man was Eddie Nash, a rich nightclub owner in Los Angeles and John Holmes's other drug connection. Holmes suggested they burglarize Eddie Nash's house. They did and stole almost $1 million worth of drugs, jewels and cash. That set off a chain reaction of violence. They kind of knew the retaliation was going to come sooner or later. Nash found out and suspected Holmes, and uh, he forced the information from him. You're going to tell me who robbed me. If you don't, I'm going to kill every person in that book, starting with your mother, your sister, your girlfriend. I'm going to torture them to death. The motive was definitely revenge. It was a get-back murder uh, for a robbery at Nash's house. And, of course, John Holmes was kind of the catalyst in this whole thing. He became a focal point, of course, uh, once we realized that this gang who had been so brutally murdered was the ones who robbed Ed Nash. Was John Holmes at the scene of the crime that night? Holmes' then-girlfriend, Don Schiller, reveals for the first time what John Holmes told her about the brutal Wonderland murders. He said that he was forced to go to the Wonderland house and let the killers in and then he was forced to watch. He didn't tell me that he participated. He said that he had to watch, and he said it with a lot of fear in his eyes. Um, I knew that that part was the truth. I believe that uh, he was there during the commission of the crimes. Uh, we have evidence to show that uh, he probably delivered uh, some, uh, some blows with a pipe himself. Ultimately, we came to find out that the weapons used were uh, threaded uh, lead pipes. Blood splatterings are evident on the south wall above the victim's head. The palm print above one of the victims um, was very telling. The investigation revealed that bloody palm print belonged to John Holmes. Knowing that the way John beat me, 
and the fists of rage that he had above my head, I had no problem placing a, a lead pipe in his hand and, um, and seeing him throw a blow. Six months after the Wonderland murders, Don Schiller turned John Holmes into the police and never saw him again. At his 1982 trial for the Wonderland murders, John Holmes never took the stand. I believe John Holmes did get away with murder. He was tried and acquitted. Six years later, Holmes was dead from complications of the AIDS virus. He was 43.